Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Blue Ridge Bobcats Coaches Show here on Blue Ridge Bobcats TV alongside head coach Voitex and Lika. I'm Brett Wiseman. Coach, what was the real difference for you? Because it seemed like there was a stark contrast between uh, how the team looked Friday, maybe a little bit of a drop-off Saturday compared to Friday, but a complete really 360-degree flip when you look at Saturday into Sunday. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I think the Friday's game wasn't uh, – wasn't too bad, uh, but you know, obviously, special teams something we we've been struggling with. Kind of uh, not taking the opportunities we had on the power plays was what uh, didn't go our way, and uh, that's why the game looked the way it did. Uh, Saturday, uh, we were just flat all around. Uh, we wasn't playing our hockey, our identity at all, um, and you know, obviously, that's shown. And then Sunday, um, we got back to playing what, what we, what our identity is. The guys were, you know, uh, skating hard, playing the hard game. Um, again, you know, special teams wasn't great, but um, D zone has improved a lot. And that, yeah. was a, that was a big thing. Like when when we were able to break through the middle of the ice, we were able to create some odd man rushes when we're kind of just throwing the pucks away. Um, the Derry D gets it, put it back on our net, and uh, that's when we get in trouble. And that was, that was a big difference, at least to me, from Friday to Saturday and then into Sunday. Uh, you look at the end of the second period on Friday, that turnover that leads to the goal, that really decided the game on Friday. And then Saturday, uh, you have a couple of those instances as well. Sunday, I felt like the guys did a much better job of keeping all the shots to the outside, limiting the chances, limiting mm -hmm. the odd man chances. I felt like there was a much more, you, you know, structured concerted effort to limiting the chances on one side to create chances on the offensive end no yeah absolutely you know we, we all the time talking about simplifying our game um and that's this whole weekend you know especially the first game uh, we had a decent amount of the shots but again uh we're looking for more we're always looking for more and so just putting the puck on the net you know guy who just came in for the last week and Brandon Contrado, right. obviously in the first first game putting a puck on, puck on the net, Justin Daly uh, getting a tip on it. Um, just, you know, nothing nothing hard to get into the puck, shooting it, seeing there's a line, see a body in front of the net, you got to put it on. Um, same thing Sunday, you know, uh, he actually didn't play Saturday, so same thing Sunday, getting a puck right away without even looking for any other options, just shooting the puck, putting it in the back of the net. So that's just something we have to do more. And there, there's nothing wrong, as we say all the time, nothing wrong with putting the puck on net. And you, you look at Brandon gets the assist on Friday and then has the goal on Sunday on that kind of seeing eye, a little slap shot. Talk about what you saw from him just, as, as we said, going into the weekend, had 180, 179 career points coming in the weekend. Now he's on 181, spent 10 years in the league. Talk about what it was like to have a guy like that on the back end. Of course, you'll have him Saturday and Sunday this weekend as well. Yeah, he's a unique player. You know, he, um, he can play up front, he can play up um, – in backhand, uh, he's very smart. Smart all over the ice. He knows where to be at the right time. Um, you know, obviously he knows to how to keep it simple because, especially as a D, you try to play up ice hockey, keep it as simple as you can. Um, so, and just to have his experience around the locker room and talking to the guys, you know, um, definitely make a big difference for us. He's coming for this weekend as well. Uh, he's going to be playing with us, so. Uh, that's a great asset to our team. Yeah, he, he's a big add, and when you look at you know where this roster is right now, it, it's kind of a tough spot with with Halsey and Hunter Hall and Sava Smirnov getting called up. Of course, you got Garrick Lindbergh who's uh, still on call up, and then Joel Frazee still on IR for another week. So uh, a lot of moving and shaking and trying to put the, the the pieces of the puzzle together for to get through the weekend. Yeah, no, it's. Um... You know, it was an interesting start of the week, obviously. Uh, losing a body, then getting a couple guys, couple guys called up, like you mentioned, Justin going to Fayetteville, um, Saba and Jose going to Roanoke. Uh, but, you know, that's why we're here. It's a development right. hockey league. Uh, as much as it hurts us as a team, I am very happy for all those guys. You know, I want them to get these opportunities. I'm happy that... Um, you know, we, we've been doing a good things here and the SPHL teams are looking to get the players from us. So that, that is the goal. Obviously, we all want to win every single game, but at the, at the same time, we want to get these opportunities for our guys. Absolutely. And, you know, as, as you kind of look to, to make additions towards the weekend, when you don't have guys like Justin, like Sava, like Hunter in the lineup, 
the onus falls more on guys like Danny to step it up, guys like Jacob Wolf to step it up. Uh, Vladislav Vlasov, I felt like, had a very good week. Of course, didn't play Sunday, but and of course, you don't have Joel in there as well, but th then it's incumbent upon every single one on the ice. It can't just be one line a in night in and night out that makes a difference, but now more so especially, you'll see, you know, I'm sure Yolenskis will get a little bit more ice time. He's, he knows nothing else but to put the puck in the back of the net. He's done nothing but that since he's gotten here. So, uh, it's uh, you know, the onus falls on those guys to, to find ways to produce. Yeah, no, uh, you know, we talk about it at the start of the week when all those guys get called up. We said, you know, everybody wants opportunity. Now the opportunity is going to come. Now the guys who was in the key situations of the game, now they're going to get in those situations. And, you know, it's up to them what they're going to do with that opportunity. But uh, obviously we have some bodies coming in as well for this weekend. Um, I'll leave the details for later. But um, it is uh, – it. That's how it's played in the minor league hockey. You know, a couple of guys go up, um, other guys get opportunities, and hopefully they get the most out of the opportunities so they're the next ones going up. And it's a, a very important weekend when you look at the standings. Mississippi stands at 48 standings points right now, Blue Ridge at 24. Mississippi plays two at Columbus this weekend, so those are tough games for them, Columbus in first place, especially excuse me, going to the Civic Center to, to play those two games. Bobcats jumped over Blue, uh, Baton Rouge on Sunday. Baton Rouge at 23 standings points. When you look at Mississippi playing at Columbus coupled with you also have a game on Sunday when no other teams in the Continental Division are playing. The only other game is in the Empire. When you look at that, you've got a chance to gain nine points on Mississippi. By the end of the weekend, if all goes according to plan, you could be, instead of 24 back, you could be 11 back. Yes, no, uh, it's a no-brainer where we need not just one, but we need all three of those games. Uh, you know, Talking about Mississippi going to Columbus, uh, you know Mississippi has been uh, playing very well lately. Obviously, they swept Carolina right. not too long ago, so uh, they're a little bit on the heater. Um, they got a couple call-ups, you know, as every team at this time of the season getting in call-ups. But yeah, uh, we're hoping that Columbus can do a job for us, and we're gonna do a job here, um, all three games. And it's expected to be a big weekend, uh, crowd-wise. We've got the the date night ticket specials for tomorrow night. We've got the all the mascots coming in on Saturday, and then, of course, Sunday, the first 300 kids, 12 and under, get a, a Dutch Miller Nissan Bobcats jersey. So let's talk about, as we wrap this up here, the, the excitement uh, that, that the guys have to play in front of uh, some of the best fans in the league and probably some of the biggest crowds of the season. No, uh, I think I believe I've said it already before. The guys absolutely loves it here. They love the support. Uh, they love the fan base. I mean, you know, people been awesome welcoming us, uh, doing anything they can help us with. Um, so, you know, obviously now it's now it's the turn on us to do a job for them and bring that excitement, fast, physical game with, uh, you know, with getting a W's. And this is a team that in Baton Rouge we've seen a lot of to this point. This will be their first visit here. So uh, what are you looking for in terms of keys to victory uh, against a Baton Rouge team that looks a little different than the last time we saw them? Um, physicality you know we got to initiate the physical physicality we got to play a full 60 minute game as we've been preaching all the time and just be shooters shooters mentality we have to put 50 plus shots on the net every night you know, obviously they have a decent goaltender um so we got to have a bodies going in the net, having bodies in front of him and as long as we do all these three i believe we can be successful like we said keep it simple that's it for